행복하세요. Be happy. This is a phrase that Kim Kwang Sok would say to the congregation at the end of every concert. Kim Kwang Sok was born on January 22nd, 1964, and made his debut in 1984 with a group called No Chasa. As one of the most iconic Korean folk song singers in the late 20th century, Kim Kwang Sok was known for producing music that truly touched people's hearts and their deepest emotions. The lyrics of his songs were very elegant, so his fans gave him a nickname, a singing poet. Kim Kwang Sok's music was folk songs that could be simply played by a guitar and a human voice. Because of its simple yet beautiful nature, his music was shared and enjoyed by everyone from students in their teens to elderly in their 80s. The power of his music was not limited to his own generation. More than half of 5 million copies of his album that were sold by 2007 were actually sold after his death in 1996. In 2014, 18 years after his death, Kim Kwang Sok won the Korean Presidential Commendation, the most prestigious award given to the artists who have contributed to South Korea's pop culture. By now, you might be wondering, what was so special about his music that it impacted so many Koreans' lives over generations? Well, to answer this question, it is essential to understand how music in Korea has developed over time. Although Western music had past encounters with the Korean community, its first successful penetration into Korean culture happened in the late 19th century. Initially, Western music came into Korea in three main ways, schools, Christianity, and the military. Kids in school started to learn about new songs made based on Western musical theories. Christian missionaries taught hymn songs during the worship services in Korea and Japanese soldiers who came to Korea due to reasons such as First Sino-Japanese War also played music that was influenced by Western styles. The music during the late 19th century and early 20th century that utilized Western scale and musical characteristics was called changa, the term that originated from Japan. However, unlike in Japan, where the word changa refers specifically to music used in school for educational purposes, any music that resembled Western music was called changa in Korea. Christian and military music, as well as Egukka, Korea's national anthem, and independence war songs were all considered changa due to this reason. <laughs> Until the mid-1920s, most Korean music evolved around its traditional sounds and changa. The potential of Korea's pop music market, however, started to get established with Yoon Shim Duk's Sai Chanmi in 1926. Since Korea was under Japanese colonization during this period, much of its music was significantly impacted by Japanese music. The first musical piece that ignited the Korean pop music market was released in 1932. This song, called Hwang Song Yeta, carries a cultural significance as it was the Korean pop music market's first independently created song and more than 50,000 copies of this music were sold. After this success, recording companies started to produce Korea's own music rather than taking Japanese music. 
The music that was produced during this time was called Yuhenga. Most Yuhenga shared a very melancholic melody as they were mainly used to console the colonized citizens' griefs and burdens. At the beginning of Korea's recorded music was its power to represent and console the wounds caused by the colonization. Following the two atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Japanese Imperial Force had to surrender in World War II and sign the post and Declaration in 1945. A part of its provisions included the freedom of Korea from colonization. On August 15, 1945, after 35 years under Japanese colonization, the Korean Peninsula was finally liberated. Korea's Independence Day called Gwangbokjeol, is still commemorated every year in Korea. Following the independence, Korea's first independent record company, called Joseon Record Hwesa, was established. Shortly afterward, Sademunul Yororo, the first independent pop music of Joseon Record Hwesa, was released. Near the end of the decade, however, many songs started to resemble somber, melancholic melodies like they did in the 1920s. This time, the main cause of this trend wasn't colonization. Rather, it was deepening political conflicts and uneasiness, which led to the Korean War and the separation of North and South Korea. Many albums were produced and published during the war and this time of separation, but most of them were poorly managed and reached conditions that couldn't be restored. After the war, the new genre called trot emerged and gained popularity in Korea. Although trot first appeared under the colonization of Japan in the 1930s, it wasn't until the 1950s that it became the most popular genre of music in Korea. Initially, Trot was a genre that was hugely impacted by Japan. After the independence, however, there were active movements in Korea to erase Japan's footprint in un-Korean arts, and Trot became the genre of the people of Korea. Some of the most popular Trot songs during this era include Busan Jungkojang, which talked about the breakup during the war, and Kasum Apuge by Namjin. The popularity of Trot expanded with the introduction of LPs in the 1960s. The main topics of Trot songs included love, farewell, and yearning for a homeland. Trot, however, was different from Changa and Yuhenga, in the sense that it mostly consisted of an upbeat rhythm with a lot of filler words throughout the songs. 
Trot still remains one of the most loved genres of music among Korea's older generation. In the late 1960s, with technological advancements and globalization, Korea started to actively adapt to foreign goods and cultures, and music was not an exception. Heavily influenced by America's modern folk music, the new genre called Korean folk song emerged in the 1970s. Musically, Korean folk songs minimize instrumental sounds but rather emphasize vocals and clear delivery of the message. This is why most Korean folk songs' main components were just acoustic guitar and a vocal. Although musically similar, Korean folk song was quite different from American folk songs. In America, the word folk meant regular people's tradition, and American folk songs showed resistance against industrialism and a critical view of modernization. On the other hand, Korean folk song was called folk not because it represented Korea's regular people's music, but rather because it was influenced by America's quote-unquote folk songs. Additionally, Korea's folk songs mainly sang about everyday lives and experienced a huge boom among youth generation. Korean folk songs hence followed a historical trend like Changa, Yuhenga, and Trot depicting people's lives in the music. Korean folk songs stayed the mainstream music in Korea until the 1990s, and Kim Gwang Seok was one of the last flowers that bloomed during this era. At this time, I would like to introduce a few famous songs by Kim Gwang Seok. While listening to this, I want to encourage you to pay attention to the details and main characteristics of his musical genre that were discussed so far. The musical progression that resembles America's modern folk songs, the lyrics that depict normal people's lives, and the harmony of a vocal and a minimized use of musical instruments. The first song we will listen to, called The Letter of a Private, was released in 1986. This song is about a letter written by a young man who is on his way to serving as a private. In Korea, every male has to serve in the military in their 20s. Going into the military also serves as a significant meaning of departure from family and gaining independence. <laughs> The next song we will listen to, which was part of his fourth album, is called To the Place Where the Wind Blows. This song, one of Kim Gwang Seok's few pieces with an upbeat rhythm, metaphorically compares the place where the wind blows with hope and dream. Kim Gwang Seok also released a few remakes in his career, one of which was called The Story of a Couple in the 60s. Originally released by Kim Muk Young in 1990, the song gained its highest popularity 
when Kim Gansak released a cover version in 1995. This song is about an old wife or husband looking back at their married lives and saying the last farewell to the spouse who passed away. Kim Gwang Suk left us at a very young age of 31 on January 6th, 1996. That midnight, after drinking four bottles of beer with his wife, he went into his room. And at 4 a.m., his wife realized Kim Gwang Suk was gone from the room and found him hanging by an electric wire on the stairs next to the living room. After the death, it was known that he was struggling with manic depression, which seemed to be the cause of his suicide. Although he left us too soon, Kim Gwang Suk's music still remains in many Korean people's hearts. His songs have been there to rejoice with happy hearts console the weary hearts, and resonate with everyone's life. As he wished after every one of his concerts, his music has truly made us happy.